this project, the Madison Collaborative, is not something that just happened by accident. It's required tremendous leadership and involvement over an extended period of time, and that will need to continue in order for us to be successful. So you'll hear shortly from Lee Sternberger, who's provided great leadership for the university community in developing this concept and now in thinking about how we can implement it successfully, both in the classroom and outside the classroom in all aspects of university life. Our accreditation agency, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, requires us to engage in what they call a quality enhancement plan. And this is the first time James Madison has ever had to go through this process. And in doing so, we really looked at this as an opportunity for the campus community. So rather than a requirement for sex, we saw this as a chance to really engage in a dialogue with each other about who we are and um, to engage in what is a really uh, rich opportunity to think about uh, student learning and the student learning environment in, in a new way. SACS requires this really, um, and in doing so, it asks the community to have a dialogue about student learning and the student learning environment. Um, how might we engage in a set of activities that um, would enhance opportunities for students and really opportunities for the entire community um, to improve student learning, student learning outcomes, student engagement in a way that is meaningful to us as a campus community. So SACS allows us to uh, determine what the topic will be for ourselves. Um, so again, as an opportunity, we've been in a long dialogue with campus constituents, students certainly, faculty, staff, um, our student affairs uh, colleagues, but also alumni, parents, to really say to ourselves, all right, we have this opportunity, what might that be for James Madison University? Um, and in doing so, after uh, really a, a, a fairly long process, we decided that what we really wanted to look at was issues of ethical reasoning and ethical reasoning skills. So how might we engage in a dialogue and how might we implement opportunities for students and faculty in particular, but for really everyone, to learn more about ethical reasoning skills as a facet of critical thinking? That The issue of ethical reasoning is um, of great importance to I think all campus communities, it certainly should be. Uh, it's also uh, something that's being talked about in higher education as a pressing need for students to really re-engage in the notion of how to be a good citizen, how to engage uh, as an ethical citizen. And certainly for James Madison, we quite deliberately tied our quality enhancement plan to our mission uh, to be um, enlightened citizens. And so we see the QEP um, as a chance to have what we hope has been a very transparent, open, and inclusive dialogue. So in our process of developing our quality enhancement plan, we uh, entitled it the Madison Collaborative Ethical Reasoning in Action. Why that title? Obviously, Madison Collaborative, because we see this as a collaborative effort that will involve the entire campus community and even beyond the campus community. We wanted to tie it directly to uh, uh, James Madison and his own interest and in principles and things like rights, liberty, autonomy, freedom. Um, ethical reasoning is at its very core. And ethical reasoning in action because we want students to take these critical thinking skills and actually apply them not just to the classroom, but also in their personal, professional, and civic lives, but application of ethical reasoning skills. So the Madison Collaborative really has three broad purposes. One is to elevate uh, the level of discourse around ethical decision-making, ethical reasoning, and to find ways to make this a teachable skill. The second purpose is really to provide a unifying framework for the campus community, but a framework that also allows um, enough room to maneuver so that faculty, students, and staff have, have different avenues for implementation. And then there is a clear uh, uh, way in which we will assess the impact of this for our students. And then finally, we want students, again, going back to application, to be able to really use these in their personal, professional, and civic lives. Um, so we want to be quite intentional about taking this from discourse, from classroom application to the real world. So how did we get started? I was appointed to serve as chair of the QEP planning committee on June 1st of 2010, and uh, working with uh, 
Provost Benson, we then uh, formed a QEP planning committee, and we were quite deliberate in making sure that that planning committee included uh, members from every college, from every division, students, faculty, and staff, um, folks from uh, the our assessment uh, team, folks from the finance team. We wanted the initial conversation to be a very, very broad one. That committee was really charged with determining how we would solicit proposals and then how we would in turn take those proposals um, and determine which might be developed further into white papers, uh, more detailed concept papers, and then of those which would finally be uh, put forward to the senior leadership for final consideration. Um, the committee very quickly uh, went to work and we did quite a bit of research looking at both trends in higher education but we also spent a great deal of time looking at who we say we are as a campus community, looking closely at our mission statement, looking at our defining characteristics, looking at the, the general uh, sort of ethic, if you will, of James Madison as a community. Uh, and, and we very quickly determined that in, in selecting and uh, soliciting and selecting proposals, we would focus on our mission statement and our defining characteristics. We really wanted the QEP to in some ways operationalize who we say we are. We engaged in a solicitation process in uh, I believe January of 2011 um, and my hope was that we'd have maybe 12 or 15 proposals. We were stunned to have 76 proposals um, and, and quite pleased. Uh, and what was even more amazing about that is we had proposals from uh, certainly many from faculty, from our professional staff, from students, but also alums, parents, and members of the local community. So it, it, it felt like it was just a really inclusive process. After we had those uh, 76 in hand, we had a period where the community could blog, um, providing constructive uh, feedback on all of those proposals. And again, we had uh, a good reception to uh, the blog. And then uh, basically, we took those proposals and began to, again, in a very kind of systematic and open way, uh, narrow down to what ultimately became five key ideas. Those five key ideas, um, all of which were extremely um, interesting, complex, and compelling, Th those, uh, those authors and their teams were asked then to develop those into white papers. In instructing each of the white paper teams, we asked them to consider a number of things. Um, first, and most importantly, how does this connect to the mission of James Madison? Uh, we asked folks to consider, um, to develop student learning outcomes, to consider how their ideas might be implemented, to consider their resource needs. Uh, and then those teams, five teams, had the opportunity to present to the senior leadership um, over two days, each making presentations um, as a group. The senior leadership then uh, narrowed the topic down to three ideas, and then finally, academic council chose the final idea of uh, ethical reasoning. After that point in time, uh, the QEP planning committee was disbanded and the QEP task force, which was still uh, a, a a committee with or a task force with broad representation, but a little bit smaller and more nimble. We added folks where we needed extra expertise as well. Um, and that group began to work on what would really become the Madison Collaborative Ethical Reasoning in Action. What to me is so compelling about the Madison Collaborative concept is that it so clearly aligns with our mission and so clearly aligns with who we say we are uh, in terms of our motto, uh, Be the Change. It, I think captures and expresses um, taking that sensibility of who we are and wanting to go much, much further with that. The task force knew that developing the five-year QEP plan was going to be complex, um, challenging, and, and very exciting. And so we, our first act was really to sit down and spend uh, a significant amount of time really thinking about the mission, vision, and values of the Madison Collaborative. Again, we wanted to sort of establish the guiding principles of the Collaborative very, very early on, and in order for that to then inform the five-year plan and, and the kinds of activities we would engage in to make the Madison Collaborative really come alive. At the heart and soul of the Madison Collaborative are eight key questions that had been developed by uh, the white paper team. And those eight key questions encapsulate, I think in a very accessible way, literally millennia of scholarship and thinking about issues of what makes an ethical person, uh, what are ethical decision-making skills, what kind of person 
would you look like if you led an ethical life? And the development of those eight key questions uh, reflect a great deal of work and effort by scholars on our own campus and scholars um, outside of James Madison who can bring to bear their vast knowledge, their expertise on issues of ethics and applied ethics. Given James Madison's um, extraordinary expertise in assessment and the assessing of uh, student learning outcomes, um, one of our first tasks, obviously guided by the eight key questions and guided by the mission, vision, and values of what we're trying to create, um, we worked with our colleagues uh, from CARS to develop our student learning outcomes. Um, our student learning outcomes are quite directly tied to the eight key questions uh, in a very deliberate way, starting with the simple uh, outcome of just memorizing the eight key questions. Can any of us name uh, the eight key questions? Can we, can we run through them in our minds? Um, and you'll note that the, the student learning outcomes scaffold from what is a very simple, low level uh, outcome, such as memorization, scaffolding all the way up to can a student actually apply these eight key questions or some subset of these eight key questions to their personal, professional, and civic lives? So if the first five outcomes are cognitive student learning outcomes, there, we also have two, in essence, attitudinal learning outcomes. One is just do students report that they value uh, the eight key questions. They value ethical reasoning, ethical reasoning skills. And the second is, do they feel more confidence after having gone through a number of interventions in engaging in ethical reasoning skills and using them, applying them? Um, we're not sure how that last one is really going to go uh, because student leaders, for example, will often say that as they understand the complexity of, of leading, um, they feel less confident. And I think some of us probably can resonate with that. Um, so it, it's truly an empirical question. So we want to. So our outcomes really reflect both um, the act of learning about them and then also how students really feel about them. After developing the student learning outcomes, the QEP task force then turns its, turns its attention to really developing uh, interventions both through uh, coursework and also through opportunities within student affairs. Um, we divided ourselves into a number of subgroups, um, and one very important and early subgroup was our curriculum committee. The curriculum committee was populated with faculty members um, from a number of different units and colleges on campus. Certainly, um, our colleagues in philosophy and religion were very active participants. We also had members from the College of Integrated Science and Engineering, the College of Business, the College of Education. So faculty who are both deeply interested, deeply invested, and deeply knowledgeable about uh, ethical reasoning and its application. Um, that group then uh, began to develop what we call our core module, a four-hour workshop where faculty, students, staff, administrators, really anyone can engage deeply with this material. Um, in that core workshop, uh, which I can say from experience is incredibly engaging, challenging, um, really fascinating. Uh, in that workshop, uh, our moderators, again, experts uh, within our own community, uh, walk participants through a number of different scenarios where there are just some very complex decisions to be made. Um, some, of the, some of those scenarios are, 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 are mundane and yet their complexities are revealed. Some are quite, um, they're all quite thought provoking. And it gives folks a chance to really learn how to apply the eight key questions for those of us who are not content experts. Um, also being developed are two additional modules, one focusing uh, deeply on how faculty might really take the eight key questions and integrate them into the classroom. For some faculty members, that might mean redesigning a course around the eight key questions. For others, it might mean uh, uh, adding the eight key questions to a particular module or spending a week or two um, looking at your particular discipline through the lenses of the eight key questions. Um, so faculty have, will have a, a, a number of, of mechanisms to integrate the AQ questions into their uh, coursework, both at the level of whether it's general education, a course in a major, a course in a minor. Um, for the disciplines that already have code of ethics, um, there might be ways to sort of take the AQ questions and, and kind of compare or integrate, looking at your own code of ethics through the AQ uh, questions. In addition, there will be uh, another module called the co-curricular module focusing on 
um, students outside of the classroom, uh, student affairs professionals or faculty who engage with students outside of the classroom. Um, they're maybe using examples or scenarios that are maybe more student focused. Um, and, and, and that module will allow not only um, folks working with students, but then ultimately the students themselves to grapple more deeply with the eight key questions. So anyone interested in uh, the Madison Collaborative will need to go through the core. And then after that, there will be uh, these two sort of uh, specialty modules for faculty working in their courses uh, versus faculty and staff who work with students outside of the classroom. So if the, the different modules are the mechanism through which faculty and staff can engage with this material and learn more about it, um, that information then needs to be translated into different interventions that really help the students then engage with the material. Uh, and those interventions, I'll describe them in a way that, that kind of follows chronologically the way the student will experience them. So, first of all, the Madison Collaborative is already described in this year's one book and will be described in the future uh, one books uh, coming down over the years. Um, but interestingly enough, the one book does not contain the eight key questions. Uh, after the students experience the one book, uh, then they will get an assignment uh, as they come into James Madison as incoming freshmen at Summer Springboard. That may be a writing assignment, a reading assignment, maybe a video clip that they need to watch before they come to orientation. Then at 1787, they will experience uh, a facilitated, moderated uh, discussion of that assignment, that, that homework from Summer Springboard, um, in which they have a chance to discuss the ethical implications or the ethical sort of facets of that homework assignment. Um, again, we're not giving them the eight key questions quite yet, but through that discussion, we fully expect, in essence, many of the themes of the eight key questions to emerge, so that by the time they lead, uh, by the time they leave that orientation session, they will have their first full taste of those eight key questions. Um, they obviously won't know them by heart, um, but it will it will set the stage then for for every incoming freshman to have grappled with and to learn about the Madison Collaborative and the eight key questions. Next, uh, the students then, uh, as they engage in their new uh, lives in their residence halls, um, will have a number of opportunities to learn more about the eight key questions and grapple with them in uh, different uh, types of programming in the residence halls. For example, programming that focuses on um, alcohol use or um, issues of sexual assault. Um, so they'll have a chance to see that in the residence halls, in their programming, uh, being talked about by their resident uh, managers and their resident assistants. The students then will have the opportunity to engage in an online learning experience. Now, this part of the QEP is, is still under development, and so there's some pieces of this that we're still working through. Um, but the idea here is to give a chance for every student to work through the eight key questions um, as, as uh, kind of online groups, um, and each month will focus one or two of the eight key questions, starting in September and finishing up in April. Um, by each student will have the chance to view something, will be required to view something, uh, again, a movie, uh, a, a news clip, something very engaging that presents a complex ethical situation or a complex moment where ethical reasoning skills uh, will be uh, put to bear. And they'll have uh, the opportunity to kind of discuss online um, their reactions to that particular uh, film or video clip, but focusing only on one of the eight key questions. Um, we're hoping that we can have student moderators, whether those are undergraduate or graduate student moderators, who will be uh, reading some of the commentary. Um, obviously, the commentary can't be too long. There are a lot of freshmen. Um, but we want that students to receive some feedback as they work through edit uh, each of the eight key questions. As students uh, begin their coursework at JMU, they'll have the chance to experience the eight key questions uh, in gen ed courses, as well as courses in their majors and minors. Um, to start with, we're focusing on cluster four, uh, given that students have to take uh, a course, both the American experience and the global experience. Um, and we've been really pleased at how many faculty members are excited and interested and ready to get, uh, roll up their sleeves and get in there with the eight key questions. Um, 
we currently have a number of faculty piloting right now the AKEY questions, and um, we've already received a great deal of feedback, very positive feedback about using the questions in their courses. Um, so we're really pleased about the response from the faculty. We'll move out from uh, general education uh, to courses in the majors and minors. Again, we have faculty already working to integrate these into courses, piloting them right now and piloting again in the fall uh, going forward with our five-year plan. So it's been very gratifying to, to experience you know, the excitement from the faculty at taking what is just a really meaty, interesting, rigorous uh, set of concepts and integrate them into what they teach. So not only are faculty really excited about engaging with this material, but the task force has been very um, cognizant of the fact that engaging with the Madison Collaborative and the eight key questions will take time and energy. And so we've been careful to put aside resources for faculty and our student affairs colleagues um, as they engage with this material. Um, I want to highlight two areas uh, there, two grants really. Um, one grant is called the Program Innovation Grant, which is targeted towards uh, our student affairs colleagues who engage with uh, the Madison Collaborative and the eight key questions outside of the classroom. Um, the Program Innovation Grant is an opportunity for folks to pilot new ideas, new ways of engaging with students um, in terms of programming or other activities. And once those um, ideas have been piloted, assuming success, then they can become base budgeted um, through student affairs and university planning. The other uh, grant option is a research grant, which is really uh, geared towards faculty who wish to engage in the Madison Collaborative and uh, really the AQ Questions research about uh, ethical reasoning um, uh, so that they can uh, present or publish um, this material. And in both instances, um, the products, if you will, of these two research grants will come back to the Madison Collaborative, helping to inform its activities and really keep it current in terms of research and programming. The Madison Collaborative is structured to have, in essence, a chair, the Madison Collaborative chair. Uh, that person will be a 12-month instructional faculty member um, who will be working very closely with faculty and uh, academic affairs. Uh, we will also hire an associate chair. Uh, we're looking there for someone with um, very strong leadership skills uh, within student affairs, and that person will report to the chair, but also work very closely with student affairs. In addition to administrative support, we envision uh, that there will be three other uh, faculty and student affairs colleagues working with the Madison Collaborative on a part-time basis. Uh, one, as an academic affairs fellow, he will be able to, with some release time, come to the Collaborative and engage more deeply with the material. Um, that might entail projects or presentations or uh, professional development opportunities and the creation of those things. Um, also a fellow from Student Affairs, again, kind of looking towards ways in which um, to engage Student Affairs colleagues and students with the material, new ideas for programming, for research, for, for presentations, whatever that might entail. And then CFI uh, is providing a great deal of support, uh, particularly looking at issues of uh, program development, uh, course redesign, how do people, how do we give people the skills they need to take this material and really do something with it? When SACS asks us to engage in a QEP, they expect the university to adequately fund the, the proposed set of activities. Uh, so the university has provided us with a budget, and that budget will cover, obviously, personnel costs, but will cover all the activities I've described, workshop developments, uh, training opportunities, a speaker series, uh, the research and program innovation grants, um, opportunities for students. Um, indeed, one, uh, I think, really lovely item in the budget is uh, the opportunity for students to engage in creating their own videos regarding ethical decision making. And then those student videos become uh, material that can be used then in courses or during orientation or in student programming. So the budget, I think, is, is quite adequate to uh, support the activities we've proposed. What to me is so compelling about the Madison Collaborative concept is that it so clearly aligns with our mission and so clearly aligns with who we say we are uh, in terms of our motto, uh, Be the Change. It, I think, captures and expresses um, taking that sensibility of who we are and wanting to go much, much further with that.